Welcome to Stellar Threads, I'm Madison, and today I'm going to be reacting to a video called Why It's Impossible to Build a Crochet Machine. And if you didn't know that was the case, then you definitely don't wanna miss this one. But first things first, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a video. Also exciting news, I have started a newsletter for the crochet community, it's called Yay Crochet, and every week I am going to recap the best content, memes, featured fibers, different shops that you should know about promoting indie yarn dyers, and whatever else is really going on in the community. So I will leave that link in the description and make sure that you sign up. All right, let's get to it. Okay, if you see me looking down, it's because there's a very mean looking spider that is inching its way <laughs> towards me from between the floorboards, like the floor and the wall. I'm gonna try not to think about it though. Let's do this. Knitting and crochet, two means of turning a string into a hat. To those of us who can't do either, they're basically interchangeable. So why then have knitting machines been successfully mass producing textiles for hundreds of years? Well, the crochet machine is just my aunt's nickname at Craft Circle. To get why a robot can make this sweater, but not this one, let's look at how they're each made. That Shout out to this team for actually doing their research and knowing the difference between a knit and crochet garment because that was definitely accurate. Also, the crochet machine is an amazing nickname and I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> That second sweater was crocheted by hand, meaning someone used one hook, working with one stitch at a time, to manipulate a series of loops through various holes to make a whole bunch of knots that you can now recognize as a sweater. The hairy Knitting by sweater. hand, on the other uh, hand, involves two needles, and the person doing it works across a row of open stitches that they will attach one by one to the next row to create an interlocking set of loops, and they'll do it again and again until, ta-da, sweater. Now, unless you're one of the many HI viewers that exclusively watch in the nude, you're probably wearing a knit fabric. Sweater, socks, underwear, post-ironic dare tee, if it's kind of soft and stretchy, it's probably knit. And if you look really closely at it, you'll notice some things. First, that mustard stain never really came out, did it? And second, it's structure. You'll see horizontal lines called courses interconnected by a series of loops. Those loops are arranged in vertical lines called whales, which are a different thing than whales and also a different thing than whales, but exist anyway. The piece of clothing you've stuck your face in for the last several seconds was probably made by a machine. The first knitting machine was invented back in 1589, making it older than- That's crazy because I don't think crochet was even invented. I mean, fact check this. I don't think crochet was even invented until like the late 19th century, like 1860s or 70s, I want to say. So that's nuts that we already had knitting machines like three centuries before. Calculus, Romeo and Juliet, and the far better Nomeo and Juliet. That's because automating knitting is kind of simple. A machine loops what's called the weft yarn through a row of open stitches, and every time it does, it finishes one course and starts the next. Rinse, repeat. Crochet isn't as straightforward. While knit stitches are only interlocked with those above and below them in their whale, crochet stitches are looped in top to bottom and side to side, meaning a crocheter can't just drop finished stitches. They have to keep pulling and prodding them to anchor new ones. That's easy enough for human hands, but super annoying for machiney parts. That part was interesting to me because I've noticed that crochet stitches tend to have less movement some of them do um especially like single crochet stitches or like a linen or a moss stitch and i never really understood why like i love the stretch that you can get on uh, a knit garment and i i know that you can recreate it in some ways with different kinds of cro crochet stitches but um not something like a single crochet and it's because the stitches are linked side to side and above and below compared to knitting where it sounds like they are uh, only connected to the row below and above them and not across. So that's why it's a little bit stretchier for like uh, a regular knit stitch. So I learned something new. Sort of like surgery or the special secret handshake to get in my treehouse. There's also tons of variation in crochet stitches, even within a single piece. A given crochet stitch can start from any direction, pass through any part of a closed stitch, skip a stitch, double back on a stitch, put its right hand in, take its right hand out, hey Macarena. In all, according to one researcher, the basic crochet stitch involves 28 movements across 9 axes of motion. A decreased stitch somehow takes more. 
42 movements. By contrast, my handshake only takes 14 movements across six axes and my writers still mess it up. I love that. It also is a good reminder why it's so important to do stretches and take care of yourself when you're crocheting or knitting, but when you're crocheting for long periods of time because you can get a repetitive motion injury and those are no fun. I've actually had one in my shoulder for it feels like two-ish years now and I honestly put off connecting it to crochet because I was like there's no way that my shoulder, not even my dominant shoulder, hurts this much. Um, but now that I've been crocheting for longer, I can really feel it. So just a reminder to take care of yourselves. <laughs> so with all that mechanical complexity, making a machine that cranks out Harry Styles sweaters would take an economically indefensible amount of research and development, especially since knitting machines already do something similar. Plus, if you're an evil fast fashion company, you don't need crochet machines because you can just run sweatshops. Life hack. Saying the quiet part out loud, but we knew that. <laughs> Now, maybe you've just Googled crochet machine only to find that they do exist and are now feeling betrayed or worse, mad at me. But the more you read about those machines, the more they just prove my point. Every so-called crochet machine operating at an industrial scale is actually a warp knitting machine. Warp knitting, along with being what happens to the fabric of space-time in my favorite craft-themed sci-fi romance novel, does use hooks and connects whales laterally. But it can't do the single crochet stitch, let alone any of the more complicated ones, and there's no variety in the structure. Basically, something warp knit resembles crochet the same way those candy burgers resemble a Whopper, or the way a Whopper resembles food. Technically, kind of, spiritually, no. There are also some prototypes in the world, but they're not really there yet. The most impressive has done chain, single, increase, and decrease stitches, but it can only do circular patterns, it only successfully completes a stitch on about half of its attempts, and the most stitches it's done in a row without messing up was four. You would probably put up better stats than that if you spent one afternoon learning how to crochet, which we know because one of my writers put up better stats than that after spending one afternoon learning how to crochet, and she can't even do my handshake. So yes, on a technicality, you can claim that someone's made a crochet machine, but nobody's mechanized the full variety of stitches and textures that make crochet, well, crochet. I think I appreciated this part the most out of the video because I had posted a while ago about how there's no such thing as crochet machines. And I got a lot of pushback in the comments section because um, if you Google crochet machines, like you would get a lot of like the Centro knitting machines would show up, but I think it's just for SEO, like search engine purposes. People will put knitting machine, crochet machine. Um, but if you dig a little bit deeper, you'll see that it is just a knitting machine. Um, but I didn't have the language to put that in my post. Like I didn't know what a warp knitting machine was. So knowing that that is what it's called, like if you've ever been to Target and you've seen some of their crochet pieces, it's really just knit, but you're like, I, it kind of looks like crochet, like they tried to make a granny square. <laughs> um, so my guess is that they were using a warp knitting machine. So I appreciate getting that information because I did not know that before. Here's a cool fact. For 100 years after mathematicians theorized the existence of hyperbolic space, which is both a math theory and the setting of that sci-fi romance novel, they couldn't figure out how to model it. Then someone came along and made a crochet piece that with its wavy, freeform shape demonstrated that you can adopt Euclid's parallel postulates to hyperbolic space. You can't knit a piece that does that, and you can't make a crochet machine that does either. And maybe that's for the best. We don't actually have to mechanize every creative human endeavor. Crochet is intended to be done by human hands. You need an intuitive feel for fiber tension, the patience to go one stitch at a time, and the ability to manipulate a hook and yarn through a wide variety of different loops and motions. Real quick, if you haven't heard of hyperbolic crochet, I definitely recommend looking this up and looking at some of the art that's been done with it. It's really amazing. I spent like a good week just going down rabbit holes um, looking at the different hyperbolic crochet art pieces. Um, and there's a book called Crocheting Adventures with Hyperbolic Planes, and it was written by Dana Taimina. I might be pronouncing her last name wrong, um, but she is the one who's credited with figuring this out. So definitely go check out her book. Could someone one day make a machine that does all that? I don't know, but maybe that person should put their creative energy towards making a cool hat or something, lest Gladys Bot rise up and kill us all. 
All right, that is it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, what you liked, what you didn't like. If you learned anything new, I'd love to hear from you. And while I still have you, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And if you wanna keep up with what's going on in the crochet community, be sure to subscribe to Yay Crochet, my crochet newsletter. It goes out every Friday. It's a weekly thing. Hope to see you on the list. All right, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.